We don't respect commercial drivers in Ghana. We see them as people who are useless. Let me use that word. And so people sit in your own vehicle and even tell you trash whilst you are handling their lives. Because if that car involves in an accident, it means you, the passenger in the car, to your life is at stake. But we don't see it like that. Well, determination, they say, is key. And today we are here with somebody who is a testimony to this saying. My name is Philip Abutiati and this is Yen TV. Today we are speaking to... Jacob Semekomoji, one of the best graduating students of the University of Ghana at the November 2019 uh, congregation. He graduated with a final GPA average of um, 3.91 and we are here to speak to him to find out how the journey has been for him so far. And so let's interact with him. Hello Jacob, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. How are you too? Yes, I'm good to see you and congratulations. I can see your first class badge. Yeah, thank you. So how do you feel? I feel great anyway, but I, I give the glory to God because it has been Him all through. All right. So we've read your stories, you know, your story, and we want to hear from the horse's own mouth. How has the journey been for you so far at the University of Ghana? How, when you started till now, how has the journey been? Oh, to God be the glory, I came on steady leave because the first time I had admission in 2005, there was no money. So my journey winded until I finally got here in 2015 on steady leave from Ghana Education Service. So my journey had been, staying here wasn't difficult anymore because at least I could take my salary and pay for my fees and all other things. And all right, it means you had admission 10 years earlier before you started schooling, if I get you right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I first applied in 2005, I got it, but I couldn't make it. Why? What was the challenge? Mm, at that time there was no money. And so... I, I couldn't pay my fees, so I just had to go and do some other things to be able to gather enough money until I was able to come in 2015. All right, so let's talk a bit about what you were doing. You know, what did you do? What were some of the things you were doing to, you know, raise the money to come back? Uh, initially, I went into some farming, but that one didn't work because, you see, it was this um, farm that you always have to depend on the weather. So if the weather fills you, you, it means your farm has filled as well. So for the first year that I tried it, it didn't work. Then I got the contact of someone from Venus Films, whom I worked with over there for about eight months. That one too, I realized it wasn't something I was interested in because I had a passion to go back to school. So finally I entered into commercial driving. And I did that for about two years and I gathered enough money and then I went to college. Wow. So you were into, from farming, you went into commercial driving. Where, where were you loading? Which, was it uh, intercity or intracity? From a crowd to another city or you were within one particular community? Yeah, I was at Bon. Okay. So I worked under the GPRTU. I loaded from there to Ho and then to Germany as well as Akosombo. But intermittently, if I get passengers coming to Accra, I do come to Accra and Ashima as well. But those were my main routes. Yeah. So all that while, what was going through your mind? I mean, this is somebody who has passed, has got admission to the tertiary institution and you were doing, you know, this kind of job that you know, a lot of people wouldn't want to do. What was running through your mind and how were you feeling at the time? And what were some of the comments you were getting that were negative? It was a bad feeling some of the times, but I still had the hope okay. that the passion was there burning in me that I would surely be in academia so I could make it one day. So sometimes... You see, we don't respect commercial drivers in Ghana. We see them as people who are useless. Let me use that word. And so people sit in your own vehicle and even tell you trash whilst you are handling their lives. Because if that car involves in an accident, it means you, the passenger in the car, to your life is at stake. But we don't see it like that. So as for the negative comments, a lot of them. If in the car falls in a pothole, the driver is in trouble. So even some mistakes that could be pardoned, people will still be in your vehicle and talk anyhow to you. But I had some passion burning on me that one day I will stop this job and be somewhere else. And to God be the glory, this is where I am today. Right now I can see you are married. At what point did you get married? I married whilst I was in school here in 2017. Oh, yeah. what was your wife doing? Was she a student as well? My wife is a teacher and by then she was also on... Uh, steadily studying at the uh, University of Education, Winneba. She was there whilst I was here, but she was one year ahead of me. Okay. But we were dating before 
going to school. And we don't see education to delay our marriage after four or five years before we could do that. So we, we, we put resources together and we made it in 2017 whilst we were both students. Did your relationship face some kind of opposition? Did you get people trying to talk you out of it, trying to convince her not to stay with you and all that? On her part, I can't really tell. Okay. But it was only when I decided to confine in a lecture of mine to know that I am about to marry. And he thinks that the way I was performing excellently, my marriage could have an effect on it or an impact. But I also knew that my wife is understanding. She was supportive. And so we have decided to take that decision. And by God's grace, after marriage, my results were even better than before I got married. So that was it. Wow. So really, let's talk about your academic work. What was your secret to success? Because, you know, some people find it quite challenging. You know, and a married man like you, I'm sure you had other responsibilities. What was your secret to success? How did you make it? First of all, it is God. I think we cannot do without God. That is one thing I believe in. So I am totally dependent on God as my sufficiency and my provider. Then apart from that, you also, you see, you can't just sit down and expect God to do everything for you. You also have to put in hard work and be determined. So I am always determined. And I believe that to be excellent, sometimes you have to go the extra mile beyond what the normal people do. So whilst people are sleeping at 10, you can add two more hours to your studies and sleep like 12 because you know that you want to achieve something. So it is God and it is determination and then the passion burning in me to achieve something in life. What course did you do? Okay, you see, Legon gave me linguistics, sociology and geography. But my study leave was based on geography alone. And so I had to major jog as I dropped the rest along the way. So social is my minor and geography is my major. All right, so now what's the way forward? You are done with school. Um, what plans do you have for the future? Yeah, you know, because I was on steady leave, uh, my employers would give me back my job. But for the current postings, I have not been posted yet. I should have been in the classroom by now, but I'm waiting for my posting. But I, uh, my, my aim is to become a lecturer. So all the other degrees that will make me a lecturer one day, that is my target, the MPhil and the PhD. So after serving my employer for a while, I think I need time to continue with studies. All right, you certainly get there. I was, I'm sure I'll see you again and interview you as a professor someday. Yeah. But quickly, what's your advice to young people? People so There are people who are trying hard to go to school. Some are done. Some have actually had very good grades, yeah. but they don't have the funding, just like your case, and you were able to sell through. What's your advice to people who fall within that category? I would advise them that sincerely, they shouldn't give up. Giving up is not an option. No matter how difficult the situation is, a door will be opened one day. And so we should be, they should be prayerful and then look for something profitable to do. There are a lot of jobs we can do to make money out of it. Yes, I know some people are selling water on the roads who make more than what some government workers are taking. And so if you feel something can fetch you the money to be able to achieve your dreams, why not? Don't listen to the advice of people against what you want to do. Fully, you know you are doing the right thing. That's what I advise. So quitting or giving up shouldn't be an option then they can actually achieve their dreams. All right, congratulations once again. Thank you. So still here at the University of Ghana, I'm with Abigail who's a friend of Jacob. And hello, Abigail, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. You are graduating yourself. Yes. Please. Congratulations. Thank you. Right. So tell me, how do you feel? I am so, so joyful and grateful to God for this opportunity. It's been a long time coming and I'm so relieved to finally also refer to myself as a graduate or an alumni. So I'm very, very happy. Welcome to the team of graduates. Thank you. Anyway, so let's talk about Jacob. I mean, he's done exceptionally well. What can you remember about him, like with him back in school? Okay, I've known Jacob since level 100 and he's, he's the studious type. He's always studying and making sure that he's on top of everything. He's just like he's a teacher in real life, he's also been a teacher to most of us. And he also, he's been helping us with some of the courses that we've 
been finding difficult and making sure that we've been understanding. So he's been a very selfless character throughout, personally for me, throughout my four years, he's been so, so helpful. And I'm just so happy that today he, or yesterday actually, he's been named the valedictorian. I'm just really, really happy because he really deserves it. All right. So we heard a story of Jacob Semeko Mojifa. That is a real success story which was based on determination and interest and passion. This is Yen TV and my name is Philip Abutiati. Until I come your way again, remember to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media. What is wrong, honey? I got scammed at the market. This wouldn't have happened if you used Gigi. Mm. Gigi is a huge online marketplace where you can buy and sell goods such as cars, smartphones or even houses. Gigi is absolutely free. Gigi! Wow!